Okay, so year nine, part four, evolution of the atmosphere. And what we want to talk about is how, how has the chemicals in the atmosphere changed over time? Okay, so to start with, very first, about 4.5 billion years ago, most of the atmosphere was hydrogen and helium. And if you know your periodic table, you'll know that they are the lightest two elements. Okay, they've got the least number of protons and neutrons. So they're really, really light, which means that they escaped into space really fast, okay, because Earth's gravity wasn't big enough to keep them there. Okay, so they escaped. And what happened next was, um, the Earth started to cool down a little, and when the Earth started to cool down, it formed a thin crust on the surface, and we call that thin crust the crust. And but the, but the Earth's still super hot, so there's loads and loads and loads of volcanoes going off, okay, all over the place, lots and lots of volcanoes. And these volcanoes, they're spewing out lots and lots of new chemicals. And those chemicals are steam, carbon dioxide, and CO2, ammonia, and methane. Okay. Now, um, that would be a horrible, horrible, horrible place to live. And luckily, it didn't stay like that for long. Because what happens next is that um, some of the the steam, as it cooled down a little bit more, condensed to form oceans, and then in the oceans, green plants. arrived and green plants do something really special okay due to photosynthesis they could convert co2 plus water into glucose plus glucose plus oxygen okay so so they could, they could turn it into glucose plus oxygen which is brilliant because I mean, we've got loads and loads of oxygen flying around okay the plants were after this this is glucose it's a type of sugar it's their energy but it also gave out this that's the oxygen and the oxygen had two effects okay effect number one is it made something called the ozone and you can think of that as this O zone as being the oxygen zone okay oxygen zone ozone and what that is is it's three oxygens bonded together and what they're really good at is they're really really good at blocking ultraviolet light that comes in from the sun okay so dangerous ultraviolet light comes in from the sun but once you've got an ozone there that uv is blocked by ozone by the oxygen zone okay and that allows more complicated life to survive up until then anything that was of any size would just get frazzled by the UV laser or it had to be quite had to be underwater. But once you've got some ozone you can actually have some more complicated organisms living on land because they wouldn't get fried by the UV anymore. Okay, so what happens next is that um, the plants and the animals they come up with a new trick. Okay, so you've got all this oxygen flying around and you've got all this glucose flying around. Okay, all, it, all tied up in plants, all this sugar is tied up in plants, and nothing's eating it, nothing's been able to do it, and nothing's 
you know, it's got loads of energy, it's got loads of oxygen. So what do they do? Well, they figure out, oh, I know, let's come up with the idea of respiration. Okay, so respiration is when you take glucose. Sorry, I've spelled it wrong. And you react it with oxygen. You react it with oxygen. And that gives off lots and lots of energy. And it makes two new products. It makes carbon dioxide and it makes uh, um, water. So it's the reverse of this process. Okay, it's the reverse of the photosynthesis process. And this is done by both plants and animals. And it's a way of using up that stored energy. Now, when this first happened, when photosynthesis first happened and there was no respiration, the atmosphere was quite high in oxygen. And, um, sorry, it became quite high in oxygen. Because to start with, the reason why this became so useful was because it was really high in CO2 until this process. And then this process, photosynthesis, took the oxygen percentages up to around about 25%. Okay, which is the highest it's ever been until respiration happened, and then it brought it down to around about 16%, which is a bit more like today's today's levels of oxygen. And CO2 is virtually nothing now; it's around about less than four percent. Okay, so very very little CO2. Um, the other thing that happened was this ammonia and this methane. Well, that went somewhere as well, and where that went was um, the methane and the ammonia would burn in oxygen so they would react in oxygen to make um, nitri nitric oxide um, which is very unreactive okay a nitrogen gas and the meth and the ammonia would get broken down by bacteria into nitrogen gas as well also very unreactive and because it's very unreactive it doesn't go anywhere so now the atmosphere is about 74 percent nitrogen okay and that's because it all came from this ammonia and the idea was was that once the ammonia had given up its hydrogen and its oxygen um, the, the nitrogen would stay in the atmosphere because it is unreactive so you're talking around about 74 percent nitrogen 60 somewhere between 16 and 20 percent oxygen and then the rest is really really small amounts Okay, so, and then that's balanced. This is known as when the atmosphere became balanced and the process of respiration and photosynthesis balanced each other out. So photosynthesis would increase the amount of oxygen, respiration would use up that oxygen, okay? And, and, that, and that was going quite nicely until um, another process came along and that process is combustion. And combustion is when plants and animals that die that get turned into fossils and then those fossils are burnt as fossil fuels it releases so that carbon which traps them we'll do that in a lot more detail when we do um, about the carbon cycle okay but for now what we need to know is that combustion massively increases the amount of co2 in the atmosphere so that's kind of like tips the balance back in the favor of co2 and that's when you hear people talking about things like global warming and climate change okay because co2 increases the greenhouse effect